Continuing with the cardiovascular pathology, the lecture today is about the high output heart failure. This is a less commonly occurring problem, but when it does occur and if the patient does present to you, you should be able to understand what it is and work with it. So first of all, high output heart failure, the definition is heart cannot provide enough blood, it cannot eject enough blood to nourish the body. But in this particular case, the problem is slightly different compared to the left and right heart failures. What is the problem? In left and right heart failure, the heart is damaged somehow. And so heart cannot eject enough blood that is needed and the, the tissue's demand is normal. Here the tissue's demand is abnormal. Instead of asking for 5 liters for the, all the body tissues, the body starts asking for 50 liters. Now heart starts trying to give more and more, but 10, 15 liters and then it just exhausts and it dies or gets damaged. So here the heart is normal, demand is more, that is the high output. So heart is trying to pump more and more, but still the demand is not met and that is high output cardiac failure. Let us see how that happens. Let us start with the condition where the stroke volume is increased, hyperthyroidism does it. So what will happen? So let us say this is, the, this is a heart and normally this heart will pump out about 70. So if this is the stroke volume that came out let us say 70 milli milliliter is the normal, healthy. All of a sudden because of hyperthyroidism, what, ha what happens is that there is more thyroid hormone, right, T3, T3 and Th3 and Th4 available. That would do what? That would do two things. Number one, it would act on heart and increase heart's metabolic rate or activity. It would also act on the tissues. So when the tissues are under thyroid hormones, increased thyroid hormone, in, hormone influence, what would happen is these would start having increased metabolic rate as well. So when the tissues meta metabolic rate is increased, what would happen? Lots of waste products will be produced, metabolites will be produced. That waste you know will cause effect on the blood vessels and blood vessels would start dilating or constricting. If you have more tissue metabolites, the autoregulation, we've done these lectures, the blood vessels will start dilating. As the blood vessels start dilating, the resistance to flow would re reduce and the blood demand, the venous return would increase and that would increase demand on the heart to create increased ejection fraction or in increased stroke volume. So that is the hyperthyroid. Normally it is, it does not, normally it is caught early because patient has other symptoms as well and they hopefully they go to the doctor and they seek, you know, uh, resolution and this problem does not occur. But hyperthyroidism, severe hyperthyroidism can cause high output cardiac failure where stroke volume demand is so high that heart cannot meet it. How about the vasodilation? So this is the blood vessel. So look, vasodilation, we have the arterial side, right? So this is the arterial side. And then we have smaller branches. Then finally, we've got in capillaries and the venous side. Opposite of that, capillaries, venous end, then venules, then veins, bigger veins, and finally we go back to the heart. So this is the normal structure. If you dilate the arteries, arterioles, what will happen? Arterioles are the basic resistance vessels, right? They are responsible to create the mean arterial pressure or the systolic and diast diastolic is produced by the aorta, but systolic is produced by the resistance from the mean, art uh, sorry, the arteriolar constriction as well. So what if they are dilated? If these guys are dilated, there is so much blood just flowing now. There is less resistance. Total peripheral resistance has reduced. And so more venous return would occur. And there is more venous return means there should be more cardiac output. And we'll have a heart high output failure. If this, this cycle does not stop, if you do not intervene in time, when would that happen? One, beriberi, wet beriberi more clearly. Why, why? What happens? So thiamine is an important cofactor 
in the ATP formations, the cycles, the, the ATP formation is dependent upon the thiamine's presence. When there is thiamine deficiency, there is less ATP. All of the thiamine problems, you can actually relate them to redu reduced ATP. So when the energy is not present, there are two types of problems that will occur. One, the heart itself doesn't have enough energy. Second, the tissue, the vascular system doesn't have enough energy. And when the muscles do not have enough energy, what will they do? They would dilate, they would relax. So when the muscles would dilate and relax, the diameters would open up, the vessel diameters would expand, and that would increase the blood flow and the venous return, blood volume would increase to the heart, and heart would now have to pump, that is the Frank Starling law. So heart tries to pump more, and then the blood comes back fast, and then it pumps more, and it comes back fast, and that is a vicious circle that would end up killing the patient. So that is a wet berry berry. Similar mechanism with the endo endotoxic shock, that the toxins that are being produced, they cause effect on the smooth muscles and they start dilating the smooth muscles because the muscles think, the vessels think that I need to bring in blood here to clear this little infection in this area. What they don't know is that this is happening throughout the body and so all blood vessels dilate simultaneously, that reduces the total peripheral resistance drastically and blood just starts going back to the heart in a very fast loop and that would be high output cardiac failure. So that is toxigenic shock. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe and share this video. Like it if you like it. If you don't like it, then don't like it. And then uh, subscribe if you want more videos. We upload uh, videos regularly. So if you su subscribe to the channel, you can get a notification and the video will appear in your inbox. And if you hit the uh, bell button as well, then you can get the notifications for this as well.